everybody, and welcome to a Code Enigma War Recap video. I'm bringing you our potluck spin today against Newbie of TH. These guys are not an established war clan, but I believe most of their members are uh, members of CWL clans, like the Bangladesh clan, I believe, is the home clan to a lot of these people. So they were definitely skilled attackers, and they showed that because they actually went, I believe it was 9 for 10 on their, dip, their Town Hall 11 dips, and that was what made the big difference this war. They only had one 10v10 triple, but they were able to get our Town Hall 11s cleared and then take out nine of our 10 Town Hall 10s with dips. Or we ran 12 Town Hall 10s, they were able to dip on nine of them, and then one of them was 10v10. They had one bitch attack, get a successful three star. On our side, we had a little trouble with number one. We threw a few Town Hall 10 attacks at this and then went for the triple at the end because we had already lost the war. We were down three stars. We got the four Town Hall 11s cleared pretty quickly. We had Town Hall 10s uh, get cleared 5 for 10 on our Town Hall 11 dips. I think every one of our Town Hall 11s missed a, missed a dip, which is unfortunate, but it happens, and it all kind of tends to go wrong at once. It's good to get that out of the way before CWL. But they got their dips done, and we kind of subsidized that a little bit with a couple of 10v10 performances. We got a couple of attacks going on our side. These guys had good anti loot bases, so we were able to get the bitch attack in for a couple of Town Hall 10 3 stars. And then we were able to clear the Town Hall 9s, but unfortunately we didn't get as many scouts as usual. And that contributed to maybe the, the lack of success in the dips, because they had to be fresh hits. So we're going to show a couple of our replays today. Uh, with the first one we're going to show is Jeff's Town Hall 10v11 attack on number 2. And this was a nail biter. He only got 50%. So it's going to be exciting. It's a stone bowler attack, bringing the miners too. So you're going to see he's going to funnel this mortar with the Archer Queen. And he's got one side of the funnel created. But I believe he's going to use the miners down here. Yep, he's going to take out the mortar because nothing's going to be hitting them. And then the miners can continue to clean up. So he's able to break into the first layer. He actually wallbreaker fails, but that's just enough that his barb king can come finish that off. His golems could even beat through that. But you don't see a lot of wall breakers in Town Hall 10 v11 attacks because they're really prone to failure. So you got to be sure that nothing is in range. You can see the expo is just in range of the wall, and that's what uh, that's what caused him to wall breaker fail. But he beats through it and he gets into the middle of the base. He's got his king and bowlers in the center. His queen is walking down the side, and he doesn't really care about these infernos and the eagle artillery because he's over in this corner where they're just starting to get in range now that they're hit, they're done with the town hall. You can see his queen goes down, and now he's fighting for percentage. Three baby dragons, two percentage to get, one percentage to get, and with one of the last hits of this baby dragon, before it gets Seeking Air Mine, he gets the 50%. So you can see if the Seeking Air Mine was out just a couple more spaces, he might not have got the 50% on this space. Good job to Jeff. Next attack I'm going to show is a Town Hall 10v10 attempt. This was my attack. This was uh, certainly not all me, but it was an iterative process, as all Town Hall 10v10 triples are. On our first attack, we figured out some of these bowler grabs we could get easily to stop the mortars from taking out our skeletons. But on the first attack, we came in from the town hall side to get the safe two star. But on the cleanup, we were able to come from the opposite side, knowing that there's a Tesla right here, to bring our golems exactly where we want them so that we can jump on this archer tower and again on this wizard tower to open up the inferno compartments. And with two jumps, we just open up bowler access to basically the entire base. So you can see we make the funnel with witches and bowlers, and then we get the bowlers and the heroes into the core, and it's a hound loon CC, so that's really easy for the bowlers and the king to just ignore and keep pounding through the base, while the raged archer queen, who shares the rage with the bowlers, is able to take down the hound, and then we save a poison, no, didn't actually save a poison, but the poison will still be around for the pups. So you can see the only thing I was worried about on this attack was a wizard tower that was here, I was worried about it roasting my witches, but since I entered the base in the middle at the same time, the wizard tower was tanking my heroes and my bowlers so that the witches could come around and take out the wizard tower from the backside. And just with these two jumps, I was able to get in between the edge of the base into both infernos. So when, you, when you're base building, you want to watch out for your jump pathing so that an attacker needs three jumps to do this, typically. If you see a base where you can get access to this much of the base with two jumps, you certainly want to try this attack on it. So you can see both sides were able to get uh, to the end of the base, as well as the core. So when you have all three sides go through successfully, you know it's going to be a three star and you're going to have a lot of troops left. 
I'm going to show our other 10v10 attempt, our other successful 10v10 attack. And we're going to do a similar thing, but we're going to come from a jump here and a jump on the middle of the base to open up everything. He is not going to open up the second Inferno Power compartment, but he's going to be able to get that with his Archer Queen. And you can see he starts the space with one loon on these two mortars and one loon on these two mortars. So for 10 camp space, he's able to get four defenses, which is just an insane amount of value. And he's going to be able to get a funnel made so that all his troops can go into the core. And he doesn't really need bowlers and witches down this bottom side. As you can see, he's taking out the corner huts, and he has archers saved for the backside corner, corner buildings, I should say. He's going to send his heroes right up the middle as he goes down the side, the only dangerous side on this base the bowlers and witches. Another Lava Loon CC, so the King and Bowlers are going to be able to get very deep very quickly, while the Rage Archer Queen works on the Lava Hound, and good job to Joe for saving the poison on the Lava Hound. I didn't do that for my attack. So when the pups popped, you know, my Queen was having to fight through all of them individually while taking damage from them. So Joe saves the poison, he drops it on the pups, and that saves his King and Bowlers from taking that damage. And you can see he brought one Loon for these cannons. Really good job putting them in surgically from him. He pops his Archer Queen ability late to get this backside Inferno Tower. And at this bit, point in the attack, he's got troops on the right side of the base, he's got troops on the left side of the base, and he's got troops in the center. So this isn't really going to be much trouble for him. He's got the 3-star, all he's got to be worried about is time. But I believe this attack came in at under 2 minutes, you're just seeing about 30 seconds left because it's the replay. It's a really impressive speed coming in from this attack, because I believe on the fresh hit, we had this base almost secured, but we ran out of time at about 95%. So Joe was able to optimize it such that he was able to get both sides cleared and save some troops for cleanup, so he was able to get the 3-star in plenty of time. We're going to move on to our Town Hall 9 action right now. We're going to show Artie's attack. Artie does a go-ho-go-ho-go-ho-why? Go, 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 Why-why-ho? Go, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but it works. So he's going to bring the six hawks to this one just to use surgically. And he sees these Teslas are outside of the base. So he's going to use them nice and early, just to make sure that he can set up on without his wizards being roasted. That was a really good job of handling the surprise by him, uh, so that he can work on the rest of the base without having to really invest a ton of troops into setting the funnel. And then he sends the bowlers and the witches up the center of the base to really abuse this symmetrical style that he can just jump through. You can see he puts one jump to get all the way into the core, and then his second jump will get all the way to the Archer Queen. So really, the only things he'll have to worry about are maybe these wizard towers that are just on the edge of the range, or worry about his bowlers and witches getting around both sides of the base. But that doesn't look like it's going to be an issue. And the Barb King is even going to walk, and he still has plenty of troops in the core. Because he can jump so far in, his Archer Queen, his witches, and his bowlers are going to be able to take up the Queen wrap up all the defenses in here, and then, like I said, just these two wizard towers he's got to worry about, but he still has both hero abilities. So he's able to pop that, and then finish off the last two defenses. You can tell everybody's starting to get tired of the loon attacks, because they're, they're working way too hard to defend them, and opening themselves up to attacks like this, with these ground strategies that are coming back now. What we're also seeing is a resurgence of these Teslas outside the base. We're also seeing small bombs, or even giant bombs sometimes, placed next to the Teslas to stop the skeletons and the witches and the wizards that are running around the outsides of the base from continuing down the side. So you, if you do it successfully, you might have one side of the base stall out around here, and you have to have everything else wrap around. But luckily, he's able to handle those with the surgical hogs for the most part, and he's just able to finish this with the witches. So we're just going to times two through the cleanup. Great job to Artie, staying on top of our six-pack list. Next attack I'm going to show is on number 35. This is Bourne's attack. And Bourne is going to have to go with a straight mass hog. He's going to kill the CC, he's going to kill the Archer Queen, and then he's got hogs for days with four heals. And he's just going to run through the space. This compact style is going to be great to hog. You can tell this guy put a lot of thought into his air defense placement, into using the archer towers in the core to prevent air attacks where the, the hounds wouldn't be tanking them. 
So he's just going to go ground on this base. So you can see he kills the clan castle. He's got the poisons shared with the archer queen. When you can share the poisons like that, it's always really beneficial. It can save you some spells. And save your bard king some HP, especially. If that stuff hadn't been poisoned, you might have died a lot quicker. So his archer queen is going to walk up, and I believe it is going to get the enemy archer queen here. Yep, the, ar the archer moving close to the base draws the archer queen in, so that Gorn's archer queen can take her down. And you got the bomb tower with that. Another interesting concept of base design right now is putting the bomb tower by the archer queen to stop those uh, the skeleton spells. So when you, you do that, you make the concession of your archer queen is always going to be killed before you do a hog attack, and the bomb tower is a big deterrent to a hog attack. So once you get that down, you really don't have much else to worry about as long as you have heals for the rest of the base. So you can see good tra spring traps in the center take care of a few of his hogs, but he, he just has so many of them that it doesn't matter. You can see he's still got three hogs left to use surgically at the back end, or even for cleanup if he wants to. He's got the Valkyrie and probably a total of 30 camp space left as he comes through the base, and he still has a heal left. So you can see he's maybe he says, I'm, I might be able to swag this, but with just two defenses left, I don't want to risk anything. Drops the heal. Catches the giant bomb on the outside, but it doesn't matter because this hawk is going to the last heal. They take down the barbarian plane, and it's all clean up. He has plenty of troops saved for that. Great job to Bourne. So newbie of TH beat us by a few stars, and it was a great performance by them. But the war was a lot of fun, and we hope to see these guys in CWL. If you liked, if you like what you see, you can check us out at enigmacoc.com or at the Discord. With the Discord join link, it will be in the description of the video. You can just click on that and get taken into our recruitment room, where you can post your base and have us check it out. Maybe accept you into the clan. Maybe come over to our sister clan, Enigma Epsilon, for a trial hang out, have some fun with our members, and join the clan. You can see we had a lot of success this war. We've been having a lot of success, and we're really in a great space right now. So hope you guys will join us at enigmacoc.com. Thank you.